expository, it's different from what most preachers do because normally you have a topic that you want to preach about and you may refer to the Bible, you may use the Bible, but you're actually preaching what you wanted to say and then using support material from Scripture. It's sort of like, I have a point I want to make and God says it too, uh, something like that. And that's not expository. Expository preaching is taking a text, understanding what it actually says, and then communicating what it says to your audience effectively. You, know, you make the application from it. So one way to describe it is you're taking the implications that are in Scripture and making the, them explicit for the audience so okay. it's clear. Well, I mean, the, the big three steps are taking the text and understanding it, applying it to myself, making sure I get it as the messenger, and then understanding my audience and figuring out how to convert what I've learned from the text to something that'll make sense to them. The slightly smaller steps in that process would all be on the, the side of understanding what the text itself says. So when I'm studying that, then you, you know, for, for a pastor to do that, he has to know what words are used, why they're used, know the syntax, how they're related to each other, how the parts of the sentences relate to each other, how the parts of the story relate to each other, depending on the genre, and then and then he has to know how those meanings fit together to come to a conclusion, and all of that in the broad context of that passage itself. So basically he's studying the context of the passage and then taking that and putting it into the context of his audience. So that's you know, the broad process that I go through. Now, of course, I've never made these mistakes, <laughs> okay. just to be clear. <laughs> Uh, but no. What's good? I mean, we came to you. I, I think actually all of us make these mistakes. The the one big mistake that all, all of us do make, even when we're trying to avoid it, we make it sometimes. But by being deliberate about it, we can avoid this one, and it's just deadly. I mean, I think it's the worst thing we do, and that is determining what we want to preach about before we come to the text. I mean, I always say to my students, not only do you want to find answers in the Bible, that's not good enough, because if you ask the wrong question, you can't get the right answer. So you really want to let the Scripture ask the question and give the answer, which means you, you come to a text and then you decide what you're going to preach about based on what the text actually said. It converts preaching completely, because I know guys say, I know my church, I know what they need. You don't know your own heart or what you need, much less what your church needs. So pre that's why I preach through books. Preaching through books forces you to deal with portions of God's message that you might ignore otherwise. You would ignore. You would only choose what you want to preach about. Yeah. This is also, by the way, why some guys don't even preach the passage they're in when they're trying to pe <laughs> preach the passage they're in. They just run home to mama, so to speak. You know, They start in this passage, but they end up preaching their favorite texts. You know, it's like this passage, and they quote the other passage, but they end up preaching Romans when they're supposed to be preaching Micah. So it's a shame when people do that. Anyway, you get the idea. So let the text determine the questions and well, the answers. Yeah, absolutely. So you come to the text, and you, you know, you're never blank, but you can at least say, I don't know what I'm going to preach about yet, and I'm going to start studying this passage, and as it gives me a message, then I'm going to determine what I'm going to say to my congregation, not... Here's what I want to talk about. Well, there's a psalm about that. Well, actually, I've done this with dozens of passages in my preaching classes. I've never had an exception. We decide what the passage is about, and then we go preach it. When we study the texts in their context, they never mean what we always thought they meant because Grandpa preached it that way. So we need to learn to let the text set the message.